Welcome to the Spillex Weekly Financial Market Preview. Uh, once again, joined by analyst Connor Campbell. So, Connor, what should traders be looking out for this week? Uh, I guess really the, the biggest macro thing this week, in what is a fairly quiet week otherwise, is uh, is cable. Again, it's the pound heading into mm-hmm. Thursday's Bank of England meeting. This has sort of been the focus for the pound for the last three weeks to a month. You know, heading into the uh, middle of April, you know, it seemed that this uh, this May meeting was going to bring around a almost guaranteed rate hike and that you know the pound on the back of that shot up and was hitting post brexit highs against the dollar since then however it's gone from a guarantee to almost certainly a no show on thursday um, and that has dragged down the pound i think in the last three weeks it's down nearly six percent against mm. the dollar from those post brexit peaks that does leave in a sort of interesting position heading into thursday because expectations are so low there's not going to be a rate hike I think uh, uh, investors are probably expecting something fairly dovish, given the state of data coming out of the UK at the moment. But if if investors can get the slightest whiff of something hawkish, or at the very least, just not dovish, given how bad the data has been in the last few weeks from the UK, then the pound could shoot up from, you know, it's doing very poorly. It's at one just above uh, $1.35 compared to, I think, $1.43 three weeks ago. So I think it's one of those situations where the slightest sign that things aren't quite as bad as what uh, investors were expecting might cause the cause the pound to shoot up. And I think that's why we've seen our clients buying around the 135, 1355 mark, just looking for some kind of silver lining on what is going to be a fairly dour Bank of England meeting on Thursday. Yeah. Okay, well, let's look at some uh, companies reporting then. So this week we've got uh, Greg's. Yeah, Greg's. Greg's had a fantastic 2017. I think it was up 52% by the end of the year. Since then, you know, that was ended the year at all time highs. Since then, it has cooled fairly significantly. I think it's down 10% since 2018 began. Uh, the investors' main issues sort of stemmed around the company's full year results earlier in the year. I think broadly they were very strong. I think total sales were up 7.4% to £960 million. Uh, like for like sales were up 3.7%. No, that was down on the 4.2% life flight sales in the year previous, which is something of, uh, of a trend for Greg's at the moment, the deceleration of their life for life growth. However, pre-tax profits, I think they were down 4.2% to around £72 million. That was on charges related to uh, overhauling its supply chain. Invest- investors didn't take that very well, sent the stock uh, you know, a bit lower, and it's continued to fall since then. However, if you dig into its figures, you can see how, how well Greg's has done at diversifying away from just what people would think of as, you know, it's basically, you know, sausage rolls, pasties, yeah. anything unhealthy like that. You know, I think it's balanced choices range. You know, so it's healthy choices range, basically. I think that now counts for like a hundred million pounds of its, you know, of its near one billion, uh, one billion pound revenue. So that's, that's a decent chunk that's only come about in the last few years. I think it also announced uh, earlier in the year that it's going to start launching stores in London underground stations, which is mm-hmm. going to pretty savvy move along the lines of it launching, uh, uh, delivery and drive-through things, just sort of upping the accessibility of yeah. Greg's, which is especially good, you know, in the London Underground when you've got busy, time-limited but hungry commuters that are just going to pop into Greg's for anything, really. Yeah. In terms of its uh, figures on Wednesday, I think I'm just expecting. No, I think so. Yeah, the company said back in February that for the first eight weeks of the year, uh, light flight sales were up 3.2 percent, which again, in isolation, is a strong figure, but. You've seen it now go from 4.2% growth in 2016 to 3.7% growth in 2017 and now to 3.2% growth. So that's that steady deceleration that I was talking about earlier yeah. that I think investors may have a problem with. However, again, it, along the same lines, it's fallen 10% this year, that 3.2% growth, especially if we can get to 33 3.4% in the, you know, in the second half of the first quarter. Uh, investors might be a bit more receptive to it just because of because the stock has fallen 10%. I think that's why our clients have been buying around the 1250 mark at those recent lows, just looking for a positive light flight figure yeah. on Wednesday. Okay, and then looking at the uh, supermarket sector has been quite interesting lately, and we've got Morrison's. Yeah, Morrison's arguably, you know, when when Sainsbury's when the Sainsbury's Asda merger was announced, I guess a lot of the focus was on oh that that merged company would overtake Tesco as the mm. as the biggest market share in the UK for for a supermarket. However, I think the real issue, the real shakeup would be for a stock like uh, for a supermarket like Morrison's, which would go from from. A solid fourth place to a very, very distant third place. Mm. I think you would then create this situation where you've got the two top dogs with like the same species as the merger and Tesco, and then Morrison's caught between those bigger companies and the likes of Audi and Lidl on one hand and uh, Waitrose and M&S on the other. I think it, 
it sort of leaves it stranded and it might really struggle in that area. However, for now, it's doing very well. I think it's full-year figures are earlier in the year. Uh, full-year sales were up 2.8%, which was against 1.9% the year previous. I think to uh, that was like flight sales. Total sales were up 5.8% to 17.3 billion. I think pre-tax profit was up nearly 17% to 380 million. Uh, its full-year dividend was up 12% to 6.1p, and that's a special dividend of 4p. So really, really strong figures. However, investors weren't particularly receptive to that. Sent the stock low up. I think it sent it to eight month lows towards the end of March, basically because there's a negligible fall in uh, gross margins and a 2.1% drop in operate, reported operating profit. Since then, however, it's seen a really sharp recovery in, in the second half of April, despite, again, the Sainsbury's Asda announcement. Mm -hmm. Our clients are still buying. I think it's at now it's eight month highs, our clients are still buying around those 245 levels, despite it climbing uh, quite sharply in the last few weeks. I think in terms of its figures on Thursday, analysts are expecting uh, sales to rise 1.7%, which is not which is good, but again, it, it's slower than it was, which that might be a bit of an issue for the sort of given how sharply it has climbed in the last month or so. Investors might take might not take too kindly to that kind of drop off. Yeah. Okay, and then we're going to finish with Superdry. Yeah, Superdry, again, formerly Supergroup changed its name in January to Superdry, which yep. it's odd that it wasn't that already because that is the name of the brand. Yeah. Uh, had had a really good 2017. I think it was up 20% by the start, by the end of the year. Sorry, it started 2018 at all-time highs. And then it's sort of all fallen, fallen away since then. I think it's down 20% at the moment uh, in 2018. was down 25% around last, last week. It's seen a bit of a recovery since then. Broadly, though, its figures, if you take its figures in isolation, its figures are very strong. I think half new, uh, half year revenue was up 20.4% to £402 million. Uh, Pre-tax profit was up 20.5% to £25.3 million. You know, as those two headline figures are very strong. Uh, over Christmas, I think like for like sales were up 4.7%, which if you look at that in the wider clothing and fashion sector in the UK, mm. that's very strong. However, that was against a 14.9% rise the year before in like for like sales, so that's a really hefty drop off year on year mm. and i think that was that was the investors main issue with with the figures back in february was that it's a bit like greg's the deceleration of like flight growth but at a far far quicker pace than what's being seen at greg's obviously it had it, it was falling from a higher height but mm. still i think that sort of uh, alarmed investors and has dragged it lower since then you also had the departure of its co-founder i think at the end of march investors weren't too happy with that despite despite I think he had had a less uh, less prominent role in the company in the last few years. I think it was still one of those things where the, there was a negative feeling around the stock anyway, and that just co uh, yeah. contributed to it. However, you know, like I said, it's down twenty percent. Our clients are fairly heavily buying it around the fifteen fifty mark, just because it's fallen so low recently. Whilst its fundamental figures have still yeah. been strong, you know, a four point seven, yeah, there. exactly, a four point seven percent rise in life flight growth, even if it is not as strong as what the company was doing last year. If you take it in the context of uh, its peers at the moment is still arguably a lot stronger than uh, some of its contemporaries, and I think that should should see it do well in on on Thursday when it releases its first quarter results. Ideally, if it can post a, uh, post figures that aren't you know avoid uh, the drop off seen the year before, that yeah. will help. But I think given how far, far it's fallen, any kind of positive figure on Thursday will be will be greeted kindly by investors, and that that seems to be what backed up by what our clients have been doing around the stock. Yeah. So a lot to look out for. Thank you very much. That's all for this week.